In the last tutorial, we have seen the when block, which was actually controlling whether that stage need to be executed or not. This time we are going to do another flow control statement, but that one actually will limit some steps to be executed within that stage. And basically inside the stage, if we have multiple steps and we want to make those conditional, we will be using a if else conditional statement. So let us see how we can use it. Again, we are having the same pipeline. Here we are having another environment variable f name and its value I have set to Kamal. Now inside the stage one, I'm adding the steps block and inside the steps directive, I am adding a script directive. So this script here will be having this if condition because this is actually part of scripted syntax and not declarative syntax. All of these conditions, these are part of Groovy. So if now I want to give the condition, we are saying here that if env dot f name, which is the environment variable, and I want to make sure that if its value is equal to Kamal, in that case, I want to echo a message, which is I am inside this if block. And similarly, I can add this echo message in the else block. And here I can say that I am inside this else block. So now let us try to take one run of this. So I'm copying this entire pipeline script and putting it inside the Jenkins job. Let's see what happens when I run it as is. So we can see here it has started running. So let it complete and then we will check the logs. So we can see it has passed. Now if we go inside this console output, we can see here that it has printed I am here. That means it has executed the part of if and not the else one. We can check here in the blue ocean view also. And if we see this pipeline script once again, we see it has printed this I am here message, which was part of this if block and not the else block because the value of environment variable we have set to Kamal and the condition was passed. So that is how we can control the execution using if else statement. Now, one important point to note here is that this environment variable when we were using earlier, uh, we were using it with a dollar and then in curly brace, we were printing it like this. So echo and then in double quotes dollar and then in curly brace, we were using F name. So that is how we were able to print the value here inside the steps. But now when we are using it inside the script, we are using env dot F name. So that is the difference. Basically, when you want to use the environment variables inside the script block, you cannot use it directly with dollar symbol. Rather, you need to use env dot. All right. So let us try to run it and see what it prints in both the cases. So we see it has printed Kamal and Kamal. And when we go back here to our pipeline, we see we have printed echo dollar f name, which is outside script. And inside we have printed env dot f name. All right. And that is what we have checked here. And then we have printed I am here. So just uh, to make sure that you have noticed this change, I have uh, included this example inside this flow control video. So I hope uh, this will be useful for you. Now let us talk about another flow control statement, which is try catch. So in case we are getting some exception and we want to bypass that, that exception and we want to gracefully handle it, we use try catch. So something which we are not sure can give exception. So we need to put that statement inside the try block and then we can catch that exception and do whatever we want to do with that exception. So generally we log that exception so that, you know, we further can trace it and make the use of logs to reach to the root of that issue. So in try, I am adding shell command and here I give some invalid shell command. Let's say I simply put A, B, C, D, E, F. All right. So this is going to throw an exception and then this exception will be caught here and then it should print the message error has occurred. By the way, since we are handling it gracefully, so I'm expecting this pipeline or this particular stage should not fail. Rather, it should give me a proper error that this has failed with this exception. So we see here. When we ran it, it has passed and then inside the log is, it has given me error has occurred. And if we open the blue ocean view, we see that particular step has failed, which is marked red, but then it was handled gracefully. That's why this stage actually passed. So I hope this is now clear to you. We'll see you in the next video.